actually going to do a little bit of cheating today. Um, I'm supposed to be doing books to movies, but I had to do this because it is one of my favorite things to read. Um, I'm actually doing a graphic novel to movie. Um, I've chosen to do Death Note, and Death Note is... I love it. It just kicks so much ass. From the beginning to the end, it just keeps me interested, and I love it. It's great. Um, I like the whole conflict between L and Light, and later on in the book, there's a conflict between Light, and I don't remember the character's real name, but I'm going to put it here. There we go. Um, so... Let's discuss some things. The graphic novel, I believe, came in six or seven parts. Um, it was a very, very easy read. It was a very, very enjoyable read. It was a back to front, which, which was actually my first graphic novel that I had to read back to front. So it was a little bit weird for me, but I enjoyed it immensely. Um, now, with Death Note, they not only did the graphic novels and then did the movies, they also did the anime series that aired on Cartoon Network um, in between that. And the movies is a live-action movie, which I thought was amazing, you know? They got some real people in there, and they did a very, very good job. I liked it a lot. And the reason why I'm pausing a lot is because I'm trying not to say, um, because... I've noticed that I've been saying um a lot, so I'm trying to stop. <sighs> Where was I? Oh, okay. Well, in the graphic novel, there's um, some conflict between Light. He finds his death note, which is dropped by the Shinigami Ryuk. Ryuk is um, a god of death. He drops the, uh, the death note, which is a notebook that the Shinigami use to write the, hu the names of humans in the book. Um, saying that they're going to die. And however many years that person has remaining, the Shinigami gets that. So if they kill somebody who has 80 years left of their life, that Shinigami gets to live for an additional 80 years. But that rule doesn't trans over to a human who is using the Death Note. So Ryuk dropped the Death Note and Light Yagami picked it up and he decided he was going to use that book for better. He was going to get rid of all of the criminals in the world. And throughout the graphic novel there's a whole bunch of conflict coming up and then he doesn't want to just kill criminals, he wants to kill this guy named L. Now L is an international detective who is responsible for capturing some of the most, how should I put it, dangerous criminals out there at the time. So when he finds out that L's trying to capture him, he's trying to find out who L is so he can write down L's name and kill him. Meantime, they become good friends and all kinds of other stuff, and then Misa Misa comes in, um, who she becomes the second Kira, and her Shinigami's name was Rem. Um, she fell in love with Light, and she wanted to be Light's little girlfriend and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. They both, you know, they both got captured, and all of that great stuff. You really should read the graphic novel. I fully endorse it. Now, on to the anime series, because I'm trying to work this into a very, very small window. The anime series went along perfectly with the graphic novel. Didn't add anything, didn't subtract everything. Everything was perfect, to the T, which they could do with an anime series, because that's being spanned over a long amount of time. With a movie, you only have a short amount of time. So, let's go to the movies. The movie was a live action movie that came out not too long ago in English. The first movie has its English dubs, which means um, even though it's in Japanese, you can hear English speaking. They've done voiceovers. But the second movie has not yet had its English dubbing. It only has English subbing, which means that at the bottom, you can un you you'll see what they're saying instead of hearing what they're saying. It's a little bit more annoying, but with something uh, that I wanted to see as much as this, I was willing to put up with. I'm really not a big person for subtitles and stuff like that in translations. But um, it was very easy to enjoy, and I liked it a lot. Um, the movie is separated into two parts. Um, there's part one, and then there's part two. Um, in the first part, they covered all the way from the beginning to when um, Misa Misa comes into play to where she uh, gets the death note 
and then the second movie covers from then to the end, which they cut out, I believe, the last two graphic novels of the movie in the second the last two graphic novels that were supposed to be in the movie, they took out and just revised it, which I didn't really agree with, and I'm not going to spoil the ending for you on how they revised it. You really should see it. It's a very, very good movie. But they did change around a lot of things in the end. I didn't like that they changed it, but the way that they did it, it still made me enjoy it, and I liked it. And there was also a very good resolution for how Elle died, because when I saw the anime series, and I saw that Elle died, how he died, I was just like, <gasps> My baby! And the way that they did it in the movie, it's kind of a, a more dignified death, I guess I could say. So I really didn't disagree with it, but then again I did. Um, either way, the graphic novel is great. The anime series, great. Catch it on Cartoon Network if it's still airing. If not, Google it. Um, the movie was really good for what they could do. The CGI, what they, which they did for the Shinigami, was beautiful. I, They looked exactly how they were supposed to look. There was no going around and cutting corners. Ryuk and Rem and all of the other Shinigami looked exactly how they looked in the anime and in the graphic novel as well. So... Death Note is a really good read, a really good watch, and a really good pastime. And I suggest that you go out and get a hold of it. Um, it's definitely something that you, it's requ uh, a required taste, or an inquired taste. I don't know. Um, you have to like it to be able to be into it. So that goes with that. Um, before I end this video, I would like to say congratulations to Literate Fools. We are now complete. We have Nick, Essential Shift, on Monday. We have Tater, Taterness, on Tuesday. We have Danny, Queen of Queeks, on Wednesday. And we have Chloe, Winter Sweet, on Thursday. And then you have me for Friday. What more could you want? Now, this is what we do ask of you. If you like what we are doing and um, you really want to know more about Literate Fools, I fully suggest that you subscribe. You hit that little button over there and you subscribe. Every, every Monday through Friday there will be a new video. We're going to have some really cool material coming out to you soon, and I'm very, very excited to be a part of this project. Um, Danny, I don't think we could have done a better job with deciding to come up with this and thank you to Nick and Tater and Chloe and Tater I love you and thank you so much for becoming um, our Tuesday Tater and I have been friends for a very long time and he's a very very he's so sweet and funny and I'm so glad that he was able to join us thank you everybody else for allowing him to join and also thank you to everybody who's been watching our videos even though we haven't gotten a lot of views the little bit that we have gotten counts thank you so much and as always ooh, I did the wrong way I fail subscribe comment favorite Love you. See you next Friday.